guys um what should i say hello pixies whatever whatever i'm supposed to say <laughs> in this situation um today i'm gonna be doing a bit of writing um the writing has been going very very slowly as lately um because i just i was doing other things i was writing songs i was learning to play instruments still trying to do that all of it's kind of on the back burner I kind of work in circles and cycles so I don't really stick to one thing for very long um, but I am still working on everything that I'm trying to work on um, and today is a writing day I think um, so I have actually just filmed another video which is the Ginny Weasley quiz which should be coming out before this one and um, so now I'm just gonna like get onto my laptop I wanted to show you <laughs> my laptop just went off i forgot how loud that is but i wanted to show you guys the plot grid i'm using because it happens to be inspired by the plot grid the now famous plot grid that jk rowling used for order of the phoenix and apparently probably for all of her harry potter books it's a really useful tool i'm struggling to plot i'm not a plotter by nature so realistically um i didn't I did actually plot the book in first draft, so I did plot a little, I wrote out very brief bullet points, it wasn't much plotting, but it, it was helpful that I did plot a bit. Um, it was more like a discovery as I go plotting, so like I'll write out scenes and go okay this needs to be happening the next time I sit down and write, but now I'm trying to make a grid. Um, and also I wanted to show you guys some of the world building that I've been doing on this amazing website called World Anvil. So um, come along with me as I do this and uh, we'll see we'll see how it goes. Whilst we wait for my computer to load, let's play some really probably out of tune, probably very out of tune ukulele. Yeah, that's probably really out of tune i haven't even checked i just it's just a c chord you know i can play more chords than that but uh look at the ring light on that i'm getting so distracted and my computer still hasn't loaded up aha it's loaded okay so i'm gonna show you the plot grid first i don't know whether to film it on my phone or actually just like film it uh I might just film on my phone here. Don't don't mind me. I'm just talking to myself. I'm gonna film on my phone here and do a screen recording on the <laughs> on the computer on the laptop. You see, my brain's working really well today, guys. I have actually started kind of plotting book two, even though I haven't finished second draft of book one. I'm kind of just working very organically, to be honest. Um, so let me see, I can't remember how to screen record. Okay, so here, I'm just gonna wait. Okay, so here is the Scrivener project. So um, if we come to the top here, oh, let's, let's just put this away for now. Um, there we go, Act 2. So, so what I'm doing here, this is the Scrivener project, and um, hopefully it will be on the screen. But, so we've got the Scrivener project here, and in one of these folders somewhere, in outlines, I've got the entire outline I did for the second draft. Um, I think I've showed you this before, but basically, that's the outline I've got for draft two. But that is not the one I'm using to make my plot grid. The one I'm using for my plot grid is the manuscript one. So I've got Act 1, Act 2, Act 3, and within each one, you've got each scene, uh, I think. Yeah, so, but at the moment they're all in folders for chapter names. So each scene, let's go to... Um, yeah, so here's some plot points for um, the first scene, the first chapter, and these are all the things that happen in that plot. So what I do is, let's make this smaller, 
that's my character Flora, by the way, on my desktop background. Okay, so here, now I've got up the, um, the plot grid. So, this is the plot grid that I've made. I'm going to make it smaller, because, you know, I can't see it when it's smaller, but you'll be able to see it better when it's smaller. Um, so, I've got it going from scene and then, so I'll say scene one, scene two, and I have two different POV characters, Harriet and Lucy, that's their names at the moment, could change. And then I've got different plot points here. So from right, from left to right, I've got the scene, then the estimated chapter number, which is the same as on JK Rowling's plot grid. Then I've got um, the time of day. So like I am trying to make this over a period of a year, I think possibly, or a few months. So I need to know what month it is, especially for one scene which happens on a character's birthday. So I've got February, this first scene is. Then you've got um, the plot point, the main overarching plot point of that scene. And then, or no, the main overarching plot point of the chapter. And then these are all the individual scenes within that chapter and what the plot point is, which Purse POV it is um, and then so Lu Lucy doesn't have a point of view in this chapter it's just Harriet and then this just keeps going like that then you've got all the subplots so you've got a romance subplot there another romance subplot there you've got um Lucy and a couple other characters their subplots they start way down here and then I like to know what the villain's doing even if he's not even if they're not in the scene. So their subplots there, what they're doing in scenes whilst they're not actually on the screen. Then I've got, you know, you can see just got Ariel, who is another character who isn't a plot like POV character, but he's helpful to the plot. I need to know what he's doing, whether he's in the scene or not. And then there's two other subplots. So it's really helpful to track everything at the same time, see, a bigger picture overview because I'm not so good at the details I have to see what it looks like overall so that I can see where they fit visually and it helps me interweave them a bit better so I really thank um thank Rowling for her plot grid um I'll see if I can show you that like in the in a screen grab capture thing but that's really interesting and then um, the other thing I wanted to show you guys is, um, hopefully it works, so we're going off that one now. We're going to World Anvil, which is amazing. World Anvil is so good. Um, back in a second. Okay, so World Anvil is basically a site where you can world build anything, so you can create characters you can create plots you can create family trees it's very very helpful it's like a big wiki page but it's all pretty and they have a, a youtube channel as well so that you can check them out especially good for fantasy books which mine is and um i will just show you a little bit of my the world that i created um we're just going to view the world and i don't think there's going to be any spoilers in this but here is the land of Caradia, that's what it's called at the moment. Um, so I've got a blurb there about the world generally, and then I've got a world codex, and it's you can see it's like a wiki page. So it's like um, you've got locations. Um, I'm gonna go to history because history has some cool stuff in it. I've been working on this. It's getting more advanced and complicated than I thought it would. I originally didn't even have an idea for an actual other world type thing. I didn't have that before uh, at all. It was just going to be set in our world with like references to another world that I didn't think would be in the other world. Um, but now I've come up with timelines and everything. In fact, I might show you the timeline because the timeline's cool. Uh, let's go the history of Caradia. So it's not got a lot on it at the moment, but this is the timeline of the history of the country and I'm just really proud of it. Um, 
you can link to characters that are involved in that particular event. So he, here are events. You can put whether it's a government event or a worldwide event. Like you can set the importance of the event on the timeline and um, who was involved in it. And when you click on who was involved, uh, let's click on Gibrella. Yeah, so when you click on that, you've got this here. I've made her, not much about her. Here's her family tree. Uh, can we make it smaller? Because she's got a lot of family on her family tree. She's got babies. She's got lots of children. <laughs> so that's almost all of it so far. I don't need to do these things. These characters are, at the moment, not integral to the plot. But... I like to know this stuff to make the world real to me and uh, it's really fun so you've got it's just really pretty there's a picture of her uh, I just think it's wonderful so let's go back to the timeline quickly you can create calendars if your world doesn't run an art calendar of time which uh, mine doesn't it has a completely different month system year system lunar cycle although honestly I don't know if I'll be able to calculate that very well I'm not good at that stuff but uh, hey, I just put it in. I mean, this is fun to do when you're you've got writer's block. You can't you can't think of anything for rewriting the story, but you want to write, so you just create little things for the world. And those things are actually becoming consequential to the plot. So these things that I'm building into the world make the the plot of the book stronger. So this could take years. I mean, this could take many many years. I'm not really expecting to be publishing this book very soon. I think with the way this is going with world building, it's going to be a long, long process. I've never written a proper fantasy before, you know, with a world that's as detailed as this. Sure, it's not Tolkien, but I'm not trying to make it Tolkien. I'm just doing it because it's fun for me. So, yeah, this is the timeline, the Battle of the Fall. That was a very important date, so that creates an entirely new era for the world and then so that's an era changing event which is why it's black um so different colors mean different types of events different priorities of events this was a very important battle involving these things and i've got different houses like um family dynasty dynastic houses kind of thing noble houses a bit like Game of Thrones, but um, I don't really read Game of Thrones. <laughs> I've tried, but I've tried reading the first book and haven't finished it. I just don't think I'll ever get into it. But um, yeah, there's a lot there. Um, and there's a lot more to add. It's very short at the moment. But the history spans 3,000 years until the end of the world. So I have to kind of fill it as I go. Don't have to. It's like the Narnia one doesn't. I mean, if you look at the, the timeline of Narnia, there's things in there like the reign of Swan White. And it doesn't really tell you anything about Swan White or anything. But I like to know for myself. Um, so, yeah, that's my world building thing. You can also put manuscripts into this, but I don't really want to do that kind of thing. I'm not putting my manuscript on here. And this is also not a public world building thing. Like, you can put your worlds on there publicly if you want to, but mine's private because it's not even slightly finished. But it'll help. It's like a series Bible, so that I... That's what they call it. I don't really call it a series Bible. But it is... A bibliography, kind of, like a big encyclopedia of everything I need to know. And as the series expands, I'll have character things in there so that I can look it up quickly, very easily, and stay consistent with things, rather than having notes and notes and notes just everywhere in paper form, just strewn about the place, which is really helpful. So that is my world anvil, and um, I really like it. And that's really it. I'm don't have anything else to say on this video I just thought it would be cool to show you a little bit about plotting <sighs> I just really hope that I can focus knuckle down and do finish draft two I'm into act two now of second draft but it's very very difficult work and I have so many ideas for other things that I want to be doing as well as writing 
like making songs, which I might document here, I don't know. Um, but that's it, I mean, this, this is a pretty short, pretty succinct vlog, um, yeah. So if you did enjoy that video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I post other videos, including more writing vlogs and Harry Potter videos, um, pretty much as regularly as I can. I can't say it will be super regularly, but if you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you'd like to. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.